Zoos fake nature. And it actually makes a lot of sense. You see, when I need a break, when I want to experience nature, tap into my primal being, I'll come here. But this is actually a managed forest. There's footpaths running throughout, because it backs onto farmland, and my house is just two minutes down the road. You see, sometimes faking it might be enough, and it might even be better. For zoo animals, their lives are very different to their wild counterparts. They get food provided for them, shelter, protection from predators, veterinary care, and in aiming for the best possible welfare, using unnatural elements really is the best solution to make their lives a bit more natural. Whether you have a territorial species looking to get some elevation above their exhibit, or possibly an arboreal species just looking to climb, having different areas at different elevations within the exhibit is a really good way to build three-dimensional space. Now, a patch of forest might be the most natural way to elicit some of these climbing or swinging behaviours, but that's not always going to go to plan. Ugh! Depending on the size of the animal, sometimes natural isn't going to be your best option. Over time, the roots that they take through the enclosure, the trees themselves, they're going to take some wear and tear. Relying on more unnatural climbing elements is actually going to provide a more realistic environment for the animals who live there. The ability for keepers to change and update those exhibits on a regular basis is going to be helped by things like ropes, fire hose and posts. Now being able to change those environments means that animals have to work out new routes in which to maneuver themselves through the enclosures. But if you were to place all the natural planting within an enclosure with climbing frames, you're forgetting something very important. And that's that animals won't just use plants in order to get around climbing through the treetops, but also for hiding, privacy, somewhere nice to shelter as well. Now in the case of herbivores, you may actually be tempted to start eating all of the plants around you. At that point, you're gonna lose all of the other purposes that they would fulfill out in the wild. So zoos have come up with two different techniques to help them with this. One is to protect at least some of the plants which are there, and the other is to rely on more unnatural elements in order to elicit the same behaviors. Protecting plants may be as simple as fencing off areas. You could place rocks along the ground or around the base of a tree to prevent animals from getting too close to the trees and over browsing. Or you could use unpalatable plants and fast growing species in order to maintain those areas of cover. With the use of food from commercial farming, such as fruits and vegetables, as well as relying on plantations, just like this one, browse can be provided for year round grazing, regardless of how destructive those animals may be. Artificial shelters and bedding materials will also allow all these resting and nesting behaviors to occur without having to rely on the plants which are growing in the exhibits. For a wild animal, either hunting or foraging for your food is gonna both be energy and time intensive. Now the risk is within a captive environment, the food is presented in far too simplistic and unengaging way for the animals. Now I've seen a variety of feeding techniques used for big cats and other predators, ranging from remote control cars, dropping food out of vehicles while they're on the move, and even things like feeding poles and zip lights. Not only will they use their speed and agility in order to chase and grab hold of their prey, but they will then wrestle it to the ground. They'll be using their leg muscles, their back muscles, shoulder muscles, and the muscles in their jaw. So as unnatural as it looks, it is an incredibly effective way to elicit those behaviors. Now this rotting log is a really nice example of a microhabitat. It's gonna be full of bugs and insects, all feeding off this decaying material. But for other animals that come and break this open, they'll be able to get themselves a whole host of different food items. Now this would be a really nice piece of enrichment to put in with a variety of different species. But finding giant big logs every single day is gonna prove quite difficult. So you'll often see that zoos will buy in their insects to feed out to their animals, but they'll present them in a variety of ways, from scattering them through their enclosures or possibly using artificial structures to elicit those same digging behaviors, rummaging, foraging behaviors in a much simpler, easier, and cost-effective way. So you see, with the endeavor of maintaining the best possible welfare for their animals, zoos will often use unnatural elements, but they're done so very intentionally to elicit and encourage the most natural behaviors that they can from the species which they keep. Now, while we've been discussing how zoos use fakery in order to enhance the lives of the animals, 
Zoos also make a lot of effort in order to make their exhibits and the zoo itself that much more engaging for the visitors. Now, if you're interested in that, why not take a look at this video here, or alternatively, we'll see you over on our channel page.